So I was doing lipo one day. I was bored, which lipo is super boring. And I was looking for podcasts. You should see Kimmy's face right now. I was looking for podcasts to listen to. And there wasn't any good podcast about this stuff. It was always from the women's perspective. Yeah. And they don't answer anything, at least the ones I've listened to. Maybe there's some good ones now. Yeah. And then I stumbled on yours, and I just started binge. And now... Every Tuesday, I drive up to one of my other offices, and the first thing I got to look forward to is putting you guys on on Tuesday, Aww. driving up to work. So, yeah, I just binge listened till I was in the OR. I was like, four or five hours of doing this. Hey, get a lot of episodes in. Welcome to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Here's your host, Marcus. Welcome to another episode of Secrets of a Sugar Daddy, the number one sugar dating podcast in the world, where we pull back the curtains, expose the good, the bad, and Kimmy, sometimes shocking stories. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so in the studio today, I've got my lovely co-host, Kimmy. How are you? Great. Thank you. How are you doing? Fantastic. <laughs> and Lily has joined us. Hello, hello. And we are pretty excited today. We, we actually recorded a podcast yesterday, but uh, that one came out last week. But we got a special guest in town. He was on episode 25 titled, I'm a doctor. Now show me your boobs. <laughs> Welcome back, Dr. Charles, in person. Thank you for having me. Welcome to Scottsdale, Arizona. Thanks. Yeah, it's nice to see you in person. I so, see you guys in person. Yeah, so you've heard our voices. You've actually seen us through Zoom. I did. I think we look better in person, don't you? Yeah, you guys look better in person. I don't think Kimmy was here. Though. No, no, Kimmy Kimmy wasn't a part of it then. Everything's always better. I don't think Lily was better. here either. No? Was someone, it was no, someone else. it wasn't me. Amy, it was Angie. It was me. Yeah, it was Angie. Amy and Angie, yeah. they're still a big part of the show. Yeah. Amy's in school, and then Angie, you know, we can only fit so many in yeah. the studio, so you get to enjoy these two co-hosts today. You guys have a lot of really funny stories. I got <laughs> a lot of good feedback on your episode. I still remember some of the stories. I still talk about some of the no. stories you told. Yes, he does. So that was, uh, I don't know, what was that, last year maybe? That was last year, yeah. Yeah. So how's it been going since? Uh, it's gotten better. Um, still some crazy stories. I definitely have trimmed down a lot compared to a year ago. You've trimmed down a lot? A lot. All right. So just to get our our new listeners caught up because some people start with the newer episodes and then go backwards. How old are you? 62. Wow. How good does he look for 62? He looks so good. Amazing. Wow. Good for you. How do you do it? Lots of plastic surgery? A lot of Botox. <laughs> Botox. Lot of Botox. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the girls were very, very excited to see you <laughs> in person today because they have questions about procedures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have answers. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, and you've been uh, seeking site for... I actually joined in 2014 yeah. and was on it for about a year. I would gotten married for, I was together four years, so obviously I was off. Mm -hmm. And then when I got divorced about four years ago, I've been on it since. Yeah. yeah. Kate, did you marry a girl who you met on Seeking? No, I actually married a stripper. <laughs> yes, yeah, I do oh, remember this story. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. my gosh. I'm going to have to go back and listen to that episode. Uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah. How was that? You know, honestly, I had a great time with her. We, it just, uh, she just didn't want to be married. I came home one day and she was just gone. And it was, no, we were just having a fight about her boobs, honestly. And I didn't want to do a reduction on her, but I did pay for somebody else to do it. But yeah, I think, it, I mean, that's not why we ended, obviously. I think that she just wanted to. Strippers have a different mentality. It's a very different mentality than a normal woman. So, so I must ask yeah. why you didn't want to do a reduction on her. Because of the scars we talked about. She, I'd done her three times in the four years we were together. She kept wanting to go bigger, bigger, bigger. Not because I wanted it. She wanted it. And then all of a sudden now she wants to go back to the original size I put in her, which looked amazing. And she was barely 30. And I said, I don't want to be responsible for losing your nipple, which can happen with a reduction, and or don't want to put scars on your breast. When I look up every morning, and I said, I did that to you. At least there was another surgeon. I can blame him, right? So. <laughs> Damn. I just, I didn't, not that I didn't want to do it. I wanted her to wait. What size was she after the enhancement? So the first time we put 345s in her, or I put 345s in her, and she was a nice C cup. She looked amazing. 
Everything was going good, but she felt like they were still too low, which they weren't. So then she went to like 525, which put her like a double D. And then she got something called capsule contracture that makes the breast hard and distorted. Oh. So I had to take her back to fix that. And we went a little bigger, but then she felt she was too big and wanted a reduction, which she actually did have. It cost me like $18,000 to have Damn. somebody else do it. <laughs> so, oh, man. Yeah. Well, I know you said last time we interviewed you that you've done a lot of procedures for girls that you've met on the site. We made a list with a couple of my coworkers. I think we're uh, yeah. something like 17 or 18. Oh, wow. Yeah. But for you, it's mainly, you know, it's your cost, right? There's not too many over. Well, too much the overhead. way I look at it, yeah, it benefits them, but it benefits mm-hmm. me too, as long as I'm with them long enough, which <laughs> doesn't always happen. Oh yeah. my gosh. And I can usually get the implants comped as long as I don't use and abuse my implant rep too much. And yeah, it may, it may cost me under a thousand bucks for me to do it. You know, wow. Which it would, if you had to pay for it, it was probably seven to 10 grand. Yeah. yeah. Shoot, that's just cost of one date. Kind of. Right? Yeah. By the time you take them out to dinner and. Yeah. No, that's true. I mean, yeah. I, that's kind of what I ask, if not more. Yeah. <laughs> right? For, for so. uh, what's been your experience after our show? Like, you said you've calmed down a little bit. Yeah, I used to, when I first got on it after she left four years ago, it was, I mean, the number of girls I was trying to manage was a lot. Like uh, how many? Up to 10 at a time. Wow. Uh, and you had said you had seven last week or the last episode. <laughs> did I, said, I? I think so. Did I say that? I think you did. Um, I, I take it back. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I honestly have no idea. People just come and go, uh, you know? Uh, no, but, you know, it's like somebody you'll see once a month. Yeah. Once a, I think my record was I had been with 12 different girls in 10 days wow. holy Dark. shit yeah two threesomes <laughs> so, oh yeah. wow well, but that's honestly an easy way to rack up the numbers yeah but it's, <laughs> you know what doing that it's expensive obviously mm-hmm. yeah. it's kind of a lot of work it's a lot of work it's like felt like a full-time job yeah. to me and it seemed like fun a little bit, but it, it doesn't become fun anymore to me, at least. It was like, this is just too much. And Yeah, you yeah. experience some burnout. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah there, there for a while, I found myself kind of in your situation because there's always these really cute, shiny objects. And they were actually responding to me and very willing to go out. So, you know, excitement. I want to go out with them. And then they kind of stick. After a while, you've got six, seven, eight that are like texting you, wanting you to go out. So I go out and then I actually started enjoying two or three nights off because it's exhausting and and expensive too. My budget can't afford that. But I just, even these girls sometimes are like, wow, you, you're juggling quite a few. Mm -hmm. You're going Mm -hmm. out like every night of the week. It's (laughs) impressive. I think if you're going to do more than one, probably two is plenty, Mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. Maybe three at most, but honestly just two. Yeah. Right now, yeah. I'm actually just doing one, just with one girl right now. Really? Yeah. Just one? And I didn't, I didn't meet her on the site. I met her three years ago at a party at my house. But, I mean, it's just like she gets an allowance. She gets, I paid, I bought her a car. Yeah. I treat her really, really, really well. So. Well, I always say that wives are expensive, girlfriends are yep. expensive, sugar babies are just real expensive, but they're <laughs> still expensive. So. Well, that's the thing. You never know. I was talking to this guy, and he's like, I don't usually do an allowance because on my ex last year alone, I spent almost half a million dollars. I'm like, what? He doesn't have an arrangement per se. He just spends a ton of money on. Which the guy was the this? Girl he's this left? is 20 million. Oh, the $20 million yeah. house guy. Yeah. Kimmy's he's been meeting some, you know, I, I don't know whether these guys have just always been here, but Scottsdale seems to have been producing some very wealthy, very, very wealthy individuals that these girls are meeting lately they're going to houses that are worth like 20 million 15 million dollars lots of fancy sports cars yeah jet, it's fun you just went jet skiing with one yeah it was really fun yeah we went jet skiing and then we went shooting afterwards what kind of dates do you take your ladies um, on yeah you know, nice dinners i love going to take them to this massage place i go to it's like, like a couple's massage couple's massage oh, that's a fantastic that idea. is right up my alley yeah. Yeah. i think the women spas like. i love going to spas i nail getting nails done yeah i love going to music concerts all the time i mean i've seen if you name it i probably have seen them that um, is marcus yeah. oh i love yeah. taking yeah. i love yeah. live music i love we always go to, to concerts yeah, all together tons of concerts mm-hmm. oh my god we've seen 
the Motley Crue, Def Leppard. Oh yeah, the Poison. We seen and, it in San Diego, yeah. and then we went to Vegas and seen it. Yeah. Know. yeah it was, I'm actually taking one of my sugar babies to go see Post Malone in Dallas next oh, week. Oh yeah, I've seen him. He's great. Yeah. yeah awesome. I'm very excited about that. I had to see who did I see last week, and she wanted to see them. It was a really headbanger type band. Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the name, but it was fun. It was still fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, concerts are always a good time. Yeah, mm -hmm. we like that. So you're down to one. Yeah, and are the, you the, still active on the site though? So I'm still profiles on the site, but I'm not using it like I was using it. Yeah, I'm starting to feel guilty feelings. I don't know if they make it that, <laughs> feel that way. Uh, is Doc like, falling in love? I don't know what it is. I guess it might be. Man. I don't know. It's just like now when I go to somebody else, I feel guilty. And before I never did, mm -hmm. but now I'm starting to feel guilty and I'm not dealing with my feelings with it. So it's hard. I think it was what you were talking about when you meet somebody else that's off the site, even though it's the same sort of deal. I don't know. It's just more confusing for me. It's a She's become like one of my best friends. Uh huh. And, you know, and we, we talk every day. We text every day. Yeah. But the funny thing is we don't see each other that much, you know, maybe once, twice a week. Well, She's actually, got, that keeps, which is okay. yeah, yeah, that yeah. keeps the fire alive because if you see them too much, right. it starts getting a little mundane and, yeah. and routine. Have you traveled with her yet? I have, actually. How did that go? Pretty good, and it's gotten better. Like when we first started, it wasn't all that good. The problem with her is she has three French bulldogs that oh. she... I think is in love with more than her child. But she, she's good. Well, and too. that's like children. Yeah. And they need, and, uh, they need so attention. she can't leave for more than yeah. a weekend. Right. So all trips are three to four days. Like we're going to New York next month. We just got back from Vegas. We went to LA. So all trips are very short. But the funny thing is that each trip we go on is getting better and better and better, which I think is a good sign. Yeah, so yeah. We, we, yeah, we do travel. She never spends the night, which... I've kind of accepted that now, and it's not such a bad thing, honestly, because I've learned that I actually like sleeping better with my dog than a person. <laughs> so I'm okay with that now. I wasn't when we first started. Okay, wait. So when you travel, you get separate rooms? No, no, no. We're in the same bed. No, just oh, I'm saying when okay. we're okay. in San Diego. Okay. Yeah, no, we're in San Diego. She doesn't spend the night. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Interesting. No yeah. One question I have for you, because you said in your office everybody knows everyone uh, about your in fact i go to them for suggestions of which ones you think i should pick you know it's really funny because in my <laughs> office we're all on seeking yeah. have you ever hired any people that you've met on the site i uh, actually i have yes. yeah yeah <laughs> and it turned out really good you know what mine has turned out really well too yeah and i don't know well, if i've gotten lucky or if it's just because we're all like-minded and we get along well yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. We're just I, one big happy family we in the We really office. are. We are a family. I'm like their daughter. <laughs> we go out. They take care of me. <laughs> I call him daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and he loves that. Yeah. yeah. My best one is this nurse I dated and it just didn't work out. I actually had given her a job as a nurse practitioner. and She's been with me for two and a half years and she's like one of the best nurses I've ever had. Patients never complain. She's an injector, and she makes me a ton of money, so it's much better than when I was with her. I was only with her for a couple of months, but she'd been with me as a nurse for two years, and we're very professional. No bad blood, no hard feelings, nothing. It's, it's great. great. Yeah. And it's funny because you say that your office, they help you with the messages or the way they do No, they don't really help me with the messages. Or? Just advice. Like, I'll go. Advice? Yeah, I'll go, oh, hey, Tiffany, hey, Daisy. I'll go. Uh, which one of these things I should look for? And they'll say, well, she's pretty good looking. Now nah, she looks like somebody you know. No, nah, don't go for her. That's yeah. <laughs> so they'll look at the profiles with you when you've kind of narrowed well, stuff down? Well, when I narrowed it down, yeah. 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 And then my one office girl, she made me the calendar. Yeah. That's so cute. They're yeah, like your yeah. little advisors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So speaking of this, so Doc comes rolling in and he's got this calendar. I'm sure it's just 12 months or is it more than that? It's 12 months. It's yeah. 12 months. And I mean, it'd be great if it was 24. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I could have made probably a four-year one if I wanted to. But yeah. his office staff, right, yeah. made this calendar for him of these girls, these absolutely stunning, beautiful girls that he has met and dated off of Seeking, right? Except for the one, yeah. Except They're for the all, one? Everyone is from Seeking except for the one. Yeah. 
Did you bring a copy for me, Doc? Yeah, I sure. Next time I'll have to ship it to you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do one without the devil face. Because Doc and I, looks like we have the same yeah. taste in women because those are some very attractive brunettes. Were most of them brunettes or were some blondes Almost in there? Or, some blonde. or, or, or blonde and I definitely have the brunette. You, you're, you're, you like the brunettes? Yeah, yeah. You like the brown girls or just the brunettes? Uh, brunette, Latin, Latin oh, yeah. Latina, big Latina, mm-hmm. Persian women I find attractive. Persian uh, women. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, we've got a little Persian we with us right now. We know about one of those. <laughs> but, yeah, pretty much every, I mean, there's beautiful blondes, and there's several in that calendar that are, you know, blonde, they're beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So even though you haven't really been actively meeting women on the site and doing much, you've had a lot of experience. What is your preferred method of giving allowance? How do you structure that? Because everybody is so different and unique. I know I have my ways, right. and we've talked to other guests who prefer a certain style. I think I know what your style is, but why don't you refresh us? Sure, yeah. So the first meet and greet, to me, that's the hardest part because it takes so much effort to just to get to meet somebody because there's so many scammers on that site. Yeah. And, you know, text. I don't beat around the bush. I don't do a ton of texting. It's a waste of time, particularly if they're a scammer. And when they say they're interested in true love and they're not interested in an arrangement, you know, it's a scam and you might as well just give up. So, so first thing I'll do is try to set up a meet and greet as quick as I can. I always go to them, always. Don't ever expect them to come to me. The whole question, should I give anything at a meet and greet? And initially I said, no, I said, absolutely no, I'm not giving that. And I'm certainly not going to send you money beforehand, which mm-hmm. I actually got that. I did a little test I can tell you about. I did in Scottsdale compare the difference, but I try not to, but if it's somebody like you had said last episode, I believe, somebody, hey, I, I got to meet this person, then I will offer them something at least. And I think it's right. It takes time to get ready. They mm-hmm. put clothes on. They try to look good mm-hmm. for you. Right. You know, it takes time. That's worth something to me. Maybe not what I would give them as an allowance, but maybe half. And then we'll meet. Usually I'll pick a local restaurant or bar now, lately when i was doing it lastly i was picking a bar that was only across the street from my condo just in case if i got stood up it was no big deal i was already home so mm-hmm. or if it things went well you could yeah. take it to the condo yeah, yeah exactly then i was burnt so many times when i was on years ago given an allowance right off the bat i used to always give a four grand allowance a month that was pretty my standard number but i had gotten a couple of girls i'd given that to and never seen them after the first date so i said well this is not good so i stopped doing that obviously and i got a little bit smarter wow and then i did paper meet for initial you know the lowest i ever gave was five mm-hmm. the most i ever gave was a thousand which i don't really particularly like doing but i've done it but also, you know, spend a lot of money on dates. It's expensive to go out. It is. I would say my average is probably seven hundred. Yeah. Okay. And still my. Um, and this is in California. This is in so California. Yeah. You know, lowest allowance I think I've ever given is three a month, and the most I ever gave was six. But that six thousand was costing me more like ten to fifteen because we were in a Louis Vuitton or Chanel store about every week. And oh my gosh. I had, to, I had to end that. I had to end that. That was just getting ridiculous. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So then I prefer. The monthly allowance, just because it's so much less transactional than the paper. Yeah, it Agreed. is, but don't, yeah, and Lily likes that too, but don't you find that it puts a lot of pressure on the relationship? It can, but I always do pay per meet for the first month or two. Okay. And then once, if we establish connection and say, hey, we don't mind see each other once a week, sometimes two, twice a week, mm-hmm. then I, I don't think it does. When I first started doing it, it was like, well, am I getting my money's worth on this monthly allowance? Right. That's, yeah. that's how that, I looked at it. Yeah. But now I'm at the point with this one girl, it's not like that. I, she never has to ask me to do it. The first of the month, I just Venmo or PayPal or the mm-hmm. money. I mean, we don't ever talk about it. And, you know, I do a lot of other things for her, too. I mean, she gets way more than the four grand I give. It's, oh, yeah. But I feel like I want to do it. It's not like yeah. I have to do it. I care about her. I want her life to be easier. To me, it's like my girlfriend, maybe not a wife yet, but... It's, that's how I look at it. You know, I've been with her three years, so. So, Lily, you prefer a monthly? I do, because, again, like Dr. Charles said, it seems so much less transactional, and you don't even have to talk about it. It just appears in your bank account, and I don't base my amount of dates or interactions based off of that. Now, aren't you a little concerned that he might feel like he's not getting his money's worth? Not at all. I'm very attentive Mm -hmm. and I travel with him. I spend, anytime he asks, I spend time with him. So, 
And so, yeah, no, he's definitely getting his money's yeah. worth. Kimmy, how about you? I've done an allowance like maybe three times, a weekly allowance. Mm-hmm. I prefer allowance, I would say, too. But in my experience, it's always been weekly. It's never been like, here's the whole month, right. which I would prefer that because then I don't have to wor- think about, oh, it's Friday, payday. It's just like, you know what I mean? I don't know how to explain. Or if it's like later in the day on a Friday and I'm like, oh, I didn't get my money. It's more to remember for the guy. So I'd rather not remind somebody twice a month. It's know, easier I that way. I absolutely hate to ask. Yeah, I hate, I don't like that. It makes it weird because it makes it transactional, more transactional, right. right? So then... I've just been burnt too many times. And like, Doc, you know, I've set somebody up on a monthly or a weekly, and then I just felt like I didn't really get what I had paid for, I guess you'd say. Or, right. you know, I had a situation happen very early on in the podcast. Actually, the second episode, her and I had this monthly arrangement. It went fantastically for the first month. And then I gave her her second month. And a week into it, she's like, hey, I didn't mean for this to happen, but I met this guy and I feel guilty because, you know, I really wanted to establish something with him. And she's still with him to this day. So, you know, it wasn't just a lie or to get out of it, but she never even offered like, I I was like, that was a very expensive. Well, we had an episode called The Depot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was it? The uh, dollars per dollars expended oh, yeah. per yeah. orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. One. So, so Kevin, Doc, Kevin, w- oh, what, yeah. what do you think your depot is? You know what? I don't really look at it that way. <laughs> honestly, I just like I said. Yeah, maybe early on when I first was doing it, mm-hmm. but like I said, with, I'm just with that one real now. And not that I don't look, I do, but it's just like, ah, do I really want to do this? Uh, I'm getting tired of it. Let me ask you a question. Has anybody had an app thing where they had initial arrangement where there was no allowance, where I actually met a girl once that, the one after I said that bougie girl that was given six grand plus the purses every week. Mm-hmm. So I met this other girl right after her and she goes, well, I don't want any money. I just go, really? This doesn't happen on a say. Yes. Right. And initially she didn't want any money. But then it was like, well, I was offered to fix her tires, do something for her, right? Yeah. But then eventually we came down when I was given a three grand allowance after a few dates. But, but you offered that, right? I offered that. She never asked for it? She never really Now, asked. what was her motivation then? Just looking for an older, successful so she, guy? Yeah, that's what she said. I just want to meet somebody that maybe someday can take care of me. Yeah. You know? So did that's she actually have one a, of the girls in the pictures. Oh, really? Did she yeah. have a good job that she uh, she was, was uh, comfortable? She ran a dental company. She, uh, she was young, though, but she was like a dental um, yeah. tech that uh, ran the company. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, kind of sure nice. She, have you got, either one of you guys been involved in an arrangement where no allowance? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Not by yeah. their choice, though. Um, choice, yeah. Well, I mean, it has also been by my choice, but it wasn't. How do I put this? It's like the conversation came up for allowance or pay per meet. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I can't lie. I don't need your money. And it's been in situations where I know that I make the same amount as them. Yeah. Like, I don't want to do that to you. And then, like, for example, the dentist. Do you remember the dentist? Mm Mm-hmm. He was a little bit of, I keep saying this word today. It's the word of the day, perv. He was such a perv. He was too pervy for me. Like, if you're going to be that pervy, you have to give me some money or something. Because we can't go through, it was our first date, and he wouldn't stop trying to have sex with me the entire time. He was just like a fucking, and he kept telling me his testosterone was just (laughs) astronomically high. He's like, I can't help it. I don't know what to tell you, bro. Go to the fucking bathroom and jack off. I'm not having sex with you. Like, it's our first date. Mm-hmm. And then finally, second date, I, I was, second date, I was still like, no. I said no the entire time. Uh. For probably 20 times in a row, I said no. And then he was like, come on. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. And he goes, really? I mean, yeah. And he goes, okay, let's, I just said no to you 20 times. You're going to have sex with me? And he's like, 20 no's and a yes is a yes. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? But, you know. Well, he's not wrong. So, <laughs> well, I was just that fucking with statement. him. You were consenting. I was telling him like I, that's still not. I mean, and I could, how would you feel if someone turned you down twenty times and finally all of a sudden and you want a pity fuck? That's gross. That's not it. I'm not into that shit. You know. Oh my goodness, Lily. What was the question? <laughs> Sorry, no, I go no, no allowance. Oh yeah, I've been on. I wouldn't say it was an arrangement though. I would say I've been on several dates that were uncompensated yeah Yeah. you're listening to secrets of a sugar daddy 
Hey, thanks for listening so far, and we've got a lot of good stuff still ahead. But I need to take just a minute. I have a friend, Maria Scaptura. She is a Ph.D. student at Virginia Tech, and she's doing some research on sugar dating. And she needs to talk to some sugar daddies and some sugar babies, but mainly we are seeking input from sugar daddies and she wants to hear your experiences and your pathway into this hey now it's completely anonymous it's unrecorded and it's a lot of fun i did it and you will really help us out if you give your thoughts and opinions on sugar dating so go to the website secrets of a sugar daddy.com click on the ad there's a quick survey or you can email her at scaptura at vt.edu and that's spelled s-c-a-p-t-u-r-a at vt.edu all right back to the show you're listening to secrets of a sugar daddy have a comment or want to be on the show okay find us at secrets of a sugar daddy.com now back to the show with your host marcus I remember the very first time I was on SA right after, not back in 2014, I knew nothing about this. I, that's why I said I wish I had had this podcast. That I went out with this girl. She was fairly attractive, kind of looked like her pictures. But we never talked money, never talked allowance, never talked. We went on a few dates and still never talked about it. It was just kind of, what do we do? But then it came to the point, well, can you help me rent this month? I gave her a thousand. Can you help me with this? So, you know, I guess it, that was kind of like it, but I would help her out, obviously. Mm. We never really, it wasn't until later on I started to realize what PPM meant and allowance mm-hmm. and all those other things well, meant. I'm finding that a lot of men who are new to the site don't really understand that it's a sugar site. Yeah, I think you're right. They are not getting it. I went out with a gentleman last night for dinner, and I already knew he wasn't into or understanding the entire concept. I view it as my purpose in life to educate him for the rest of the women on the site. And I really tried to explain it to him and I think he he just wasn't receptive to it. Yeah. And I said, how long have you been on the site? And he says, one week. Oh. Mm. And I said, how many dates have you gone on? This is my first. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, let's, is it for a rude awakening? let's do this. I'm not going to continue to see you, but I like you. You're friendly. We have good conversation. I want to stay in touch, and I want you to go on several more dates, and then I want you to tell me what transpires. (laughs) And I want you to tell me how many of those women don't want to be spoiled. So we'll see. Because he adamantly said he was not about that life. Then why are you on this site? He said there's a lot of women on here who don't expect to be compensated or spoiled oh yeah. whatever i don't i don't agree with that. yeah <laughs> I, I don't agree <laughs> either i'm not finding those i've never found that one yeah and that. and if you want to go out with the quality women they're there for a reason mm-hmm. yeah. yeah well i mean it's not well, fucking tinder have... or bumble okay it's seeking arrangements for a reason the only thing i do understand the type of arrangement i do understand is someone who is really using it how do I, it doesn't know, even that doesn't even make sense. If someone's like, well, I don't, I'm not really in for the money. I just want someone to take care of me. What does take care of mean to you if you're looking at it's, a successful yeah. it money? Means it means yeah, money. Pay, pay my bills, take yeah, care of exactly. me. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly, exactly what like. the hell it means. Like, Give me a comfortable life. It doesn't make sense. But you know what I was thinking about? What were you thinking about? So my first ex off seeking, my year long arrangement where I almost got married. Mm-hmm. So he asked me in the beginning, I was 19. He asked me, paper me or allowance? And I'm like, what the fuck does that even mean? Because I, I got on seeking arrangements because I saw this girl on YouTube who was talking about how this guy took her on a private jet. And I was like, what? What's a, I was, my life was so completely different. I'd never, I was sitting in a dorm all day fucking playing with my stocks. I didn't know anything about this type of world, right? And so I'm looking it up. I'm looking up the lingo. And I'm like, you know, just my expenses, and he's like, what are your expenses? I'm like a few thousand dollars a month. I was in school, so most of it was loans too. And he was like, yeah, that's easy for sure. Got you. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's wonderful. Now on the flip side, okay, I really like that because I had a year long arrangement with him. Although he was toxic, I do like long term and like stability. So I'm like, I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to stop saying I want an allowance of this much or whatever. I'm just going to say, you know what? I just want help with my expenses. So then I go to check what my expenses are. $20,000, $20,000 a month, at least. 
your expenses right my now? My expenses are right now are twenty thousand dollars a month. You need to shave that budget. <laughs> yeah. Well, you well also I'm like paying people for shit. Well, that's not, a, not that like, business. There's some business well, expenses even out, you're lumping outside of the business is at least like ten of it. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a pretty so decent amount. Let's so revisit what you said about. So then it's like if someone's like, "What's your expenses?" If I if I'm saying twenty thousand dollars, they're like. You make more money than me. Like you can't. I'm not even spending twenty thousand right. dollars. Yeah, I said that one time to somebody, and they're like, "You should be my sugar mama." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's so. revisit what you said about being in a toxic relationship from seeking. Have you ever experienced anything like that, Dr. Charles? Oh yeah, yeah, a few. Do you tell? Do I tell? No. no tell us. Oh, tell us. Go on. Uh, tell us everything. <laughs> I don't know if it would be toxic, but ones that I kind of got screwed over on. I can actually tell you one I just recently had. I had these two girls that I had met and they were better looking than the ones and they came as a team. They were friends. I go, I've never been with two. Let's give it a shot. And this was like six months ago. Everything was great. We always had great times together. Always had fun. Never had problems with it. It was perfect. This is like great life. And then about a couple months ago, I was going to go to Hawaii with them. And two days before going to Hawaii, she sends me this crazy text that says, well, I was in the ER last night. I had a nervous breakdown, and I can't possibly go on a trip to Hawaii. So uh, me and my friend, she's going to drive me back to her. She was from Georgia. Going to just drive me. i got to be with my family. you got to go back to Georgia. I'm so sorry to do this to you. Meanwhile, I'm out six grand because I was going to yeah. stay at the Ritz-Carlton in Maui, mm. and it was a non-refundable mm -hmm. deposit. So I was like, oh, crap. That honestly, I mean, I was upset that they couldn't go, but I was more upset I was going to lose six grand. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, then ever since then, they've just out of my life. She just ghosted you. After pretty that? much just or ghosted the, the me. The pair of them. Yeah, just ghosted me. Yeah. Or yeah, just pretty much ghosted me after that. Yeah. Well, I noticed in your calendar, someone has drawn devil horns. Oh, okay. On well, that is that is a toxic on, one. On one of the girls. She What's did. that about? Yep, that is a toxic one. So okay, besides <laughs> the one I'm with now, the one with the horns was another one I had been on and off with for three years. And I'd broken up with her twice to honestly date a younger, prettier girl both times. But about a year and a half ago, I started seeing her pretty regularly. And she just seemed perfect. I mean, she gave me everything I wanted as far as staying at night, affectionate, all these other things that the other one, which I really care for, doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so I was getting really confused because it was these two girls who I both cared about and could see myself with exclusively, but it was tearing me apart inside, and the guilt was literally driving me crazy. Really? Mm -hmm. So in end of July, August, she would always travel with me nowhere, anywhere. She'd drop a hat, no problem. We'd the go, devil? The Are devil. Are talking went, about the not devil? Not a drop. And she had a kid, never had a problem getting babysitter. We'd go, we'd travel Cancun, all over the place. So we were going to Brazil and Colombia was the trip planned. We went... But I had so much guilt, I told the other one what was going on. Because the other one I actually cared a lot more for. But the other one gave me more what I wanted. Go on trips, spend the night, all the things I would want. Yeah. But the other one I actually had stronger feelings for. And I just I had to come out and tell her. I just said, look, my name was Steph. I said, yeah, I, I just have to tell you, I can't deal with this guilt. And she, I, here I think she's going to break up with me, right? So she's going to end it. She goes, you're such an honest person. I love you so much. Really? That's what I guess. Is that what telling the truth pays? Sometimes maybe. No, sometimes yeah. Maybe it's better to yeah, tell the truth. Sometimes the truth is better, there, Doc. <laughs> so the truth will set you free. free. So I said, no. I said, look, why don't you just go with me, and I'll just get rid of her because I want to go to this trip, but I would rather go with you. But she never did. So I ended up going with the one with the devil thing, and yeah, we went. We had a couple fights, but the bad one was the night, the next to last night, we were there. And, you know, sometimes you're drinking and the truth comes out. Yep. And you say things how you really feel. Truth serum. And it was already getting a little bit more. She was using me as like an ATM before this almost every freaking day or every time. we, Even though I gave her the generous allowance, I gave all of them. She'd like, oh, babe, I need $500 for my nails. Oh, babe, I need $500 to fix my water heater. Oh, babe, I need 1000 for this to do this. And that's the only word she ever called me, babe, because... That's I don't. She probably had multiple guys. That's because she can't get confused, right? <laughs> right. So to the last the night, we were in <laughs> South America. We were having this great time, this great dinner at Michelin star restaurant down there. Went out, and she used to be a, a lesbian from 
until she was 30 years old. She was with women. She had a relationship with women. And it was, of course, we were at a gay bar because she liked gay bars. And I don't know what happened. Things just went to shit that day where she just started calling me these names. That I was a bad dad. I was a drug addict. I was this. I was that. I go, oh, my God, this is really how you feel, Lori? This is what you really think of me? And I sent her home the next day, a day early. I put her ass on a plane, got her ass out of there, and enjoyed my last night in Brazil by myself. Well, good for you. And, and ended it, just ended it. Just haven't seen her since. That actually worked itself out, though. Yeah. Yeah, now she's in Greece with somebody else, I think. But that's fine. <laughs> that's a different story. I tell you, I've <laughs> traveled uh, and gotten in fights with the yeah. person that I traveled with. It's so bad. And that wasn't the only first fight we've had. We've had really? fights on other trips. Yeah. I guess that was the most toxic one I had. This really wasn't that toxic. So I actually wrote a question down, and you were kind of covering it there. With all these different girls that you've met and dated over the years, do you still get requests for, hey, can you help me with all rent? The time. This? I know. What do you, how the, do you deal with this? I'm changing my phone number. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm going to cancel my phone number. Yeah. Get a new phone number. Yeah. yeah. It gets old, and it's just like annoying. It's never ending, right? It's never ending, particularly around the first of the month. And it's always a great yeah. story. It's always something. They, they're tugging your heart. They need this. They right. need that. You'll help them a little bit here and there. And then it's never ending. Yeah, particularly if I, which I think I am going to decide to go exclusive with this one girl, I'm definitely mm-hmm. going to change my number. Yeah. yeah. You know, I recently got another phone. So I have one phone for my three, friends. <laughs> you have three? That's crazy. Uh, and you, you thought you were track? a badass oh, with two. Yeah. I could not keep track. Oh, my gosh. I it's have two great. phone numbers. Uh. But it's all on one phone. Right. So the thing with mine is like I have, you know, iCloud. So I get like, I'll be in one room and then I'll get a text from one phone. I'll be on the other one. But the numbers don't share. It's interesting. It's pretty cool. I recommend it. So you could technically get everything on one phone. I could technically. Yeah. So it's nice. Like if you were to text my old number, I would get it on my new phone. Perfect. Yeah, it's wonderful. But if I text someone directly off this phone, like a new number or something, then yeah, they'll get my new number. So. So with these requests, do you politely decline? Do you ignore them? How do you deal with these? Both. If it's somebody I I was with for quite a while, I would respond back to them, just say, hey, I met somebody. I'm in a relationship right now, but sorry, I can't help you. Or, Or if it's ones that are just random ones i've been out once or twice wrong to do but i ghost them i guess yeah yeah Yeah. i had this one i met her in vegas and great girl we're still friends she's like hey can you loan me 300 bucks for this or 150 dollars for this i'll pay you back Mm -mm. (laughs) no but get this story so i did never expecting to see that money again and by god she paid me back wow that's so then she then she asked me again i'm like Okay, I gave her money, and then she paid me back. But it's never ending now. It's like I'm her like personal loan officer or something. She always pays me back, but I'm so tired of it. How yeah. often does she ask? All the time. Start well, charging her interest. Like weekly, Put monthly. her on payroll. Well, it's just something that comes <laughs> Have up. Have her pay you, pay you under the table and <laughs> put her on as a 1099 or something. Yeah. You so, got to be careful about that, though, because then they can follow. Because I did have this girl on my payroll, this one South America girl. Mm-hmm. And because I was trying to get her to refinance her house, get a low interest. Mm-hmm. But she didn't work. She had no proof of income. Mm. So I put her on my payroll. I gave her the same allowance, but on my payroll. The mistake, I didn't realize, she didn't do it, but technically, she could claim unemployment after that because she's on your payroll legally. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't do it. Don't put her on payroll. Because yeah. if, it, if it goes bad, then she can file unemployment. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful mm. with that. I didn't know that, but uh, I talked that, to, It makes sense. Yeah. Lily, I know, I don't think you've ever done that. At, done what? Like message the past sugar daddy and asked him for money to I help have, you with a bill or no, something like I that. No, I have never. Yeah. I have never. I can't lie, I did. Never but that was I, I was ever. in a that wasn't a bad rut. I had a lot of like legal fees because I had just left my ex and a lot of debt because he put a car under my name that I was complete loan. Like maybe like I don't know two percent of it was paid off or something crazy. Like so well, you know what? And I guess you're right because desperate times call for desperate measures. I guess I'm very very fortunate that I've never been that mm-hmm. desperate. Yeah. So. I count my blessings. So, Doc, have you ever co-signed on an apartment or a lease or anything for a sugar baby? I, I have made that mistake. I did that early <laughs> on, the very first, first or second. It one. never works out. Uh, or fortunately did yours. for me, it didn't bite me in the butt. It was a girl. She was living in Long Beach, and 
She wanted to get an apartment, but she needed to co-sign her. Yeah. I did co-sign her. The arrangement lasted like six weeks. Yeah, exactly. And then she pulled this, well, your name is on this too. I'll just default on it. And I go, well, if you do, then I'll just you'll have them put you out and I'll just keep it for myself. And I never Wait, was she one. a woman scorned? Did you end the relationship? Uh, yeah, I did, oh. but she did a lot of things that I should have ended it. Yeah, for. but okay. you've got to, yeah. you got to beware of a woman scorned. Yeah. What does that mean? Ooh, that yeah. is, do, <laughs> do not, not, mess do with not <laughs> piss off a woman. Do not. Yeah. Cause it will come too back to, to bite that. you. <laughs> right. I mean, I took somebody to court, but I, it was for There's a saying, good reasons. hell hath no fury, like a woman scorned. Mm-hmm. So if you do a woman wrong. Mm-hmm. Revenge. The, f- the fires of hell are coming after you. <laughs> coming I, in hot. I've oh. never been revengeful, ever. I've only been fair. And that is a lie. I have not been you revengeful. You straight up asked my friend, who was with Border oh. Patrol, if he could do anything about your ex who was here illegally. <laughs> you are Now, vengeful. that is not vengeful. <laughs> yes, it just, is. To, just to make it clear, okay, he's a wife beater. So he deserves to go back to wherever <laughs> and he did so not i got a restraining it's order and it's and not it wasn't even it didn't end at me so you're gonna send him to beat the women in canada for sure maybe he can have a time out and think about what he did because the opportunities of this country he cannot you know he does not have in canada you know his particular business did not survive in canada which is why he came here trying to get him deported vengeful Okay, we're gonna need a survey about that. I'm not I don't think he so. I think it's fair. It. He does deserve it. But I think I, I think I I'm just know. I am just making sure. <laughs> I'm kind of with Kimmy on this one. That our country does what it's supposed <laughs> to do. I mean, come She's on, it's protecting not, America. Can, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm I'm Captain America over here. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Doc, uh, our numbers are off the charts here for the I podcast. I noticed. I've been hearing that. But you're you're one of our first listeners, I think. You were uh, early on in the very show. Very early on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always curious on how people found us, and I, I'm sure I asked you last time, but uh, how did you stumble across Secrets of a Sugar Daddy? So I was doing lipo one day. I was bored, which lipo is super boring, and... <laughs> I was looking for podcasts. You should see Kimmy's face right now. I was looking for podcasts to listen to, and there wasn't any good podcast about this stuff. It was always from the women's perspective. Yeah. And they don't answer anything, at least the ones I've listened to. Maybe there's some good ones now. Yeah. And then I stumbled on yours, and I just started binge. And now, every Tuesday, I drive up to one of my other offices, and the first thing I got to look forward to is putting you guys on on Tuesday. It's driving up to work. So, yeah, I just binge listened till I was in the OR. I said, Four or five hours of doing this, hey, you get a lot of episodes in. Yeah. And people will be going, hey, 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 you. Oh, sorry, sorry. my ears, I'm listening to something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, I don't know if they're new. Listening, listening to all this, this nonsense. Yeah. So yeah. That's how I just kind of Googled Sugar Daddy podcast or something like that. I don't remember why. So, a girl that I'm seeing right now that I met on the site that I'm kind of falling for. She listens to our podcast religiously every Tuesday, right? And yeah. she's a nanny for a three-year-old. And she told me the other day, she goes, I caught singing the the theme song from your podcast. The Kid She Nannies? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, she was going, welcome to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Oh, <laughs> my God. A three-year-old. Yeah. Dad, and can't. she's like, oh, my God. If her parents hear this. Like, if she repeats that to her parents, they're going to be like, where does she get this? <laughs> oh, my She's God. She's three? Yeah. And she started oh. She started singing our uh, opening song. Oh, great. Or our opening our Welcome intro there. Welcome to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. <laughs> yeah. So Here's your host, Marcus. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you, um, you know, you said it would be great if there was something like this when you started. And same here, right? Yeah. And that's kind of the big reason we started the podcast is to go through some of the trials and tribulations that we encountered to find these good people. What do you think some of the subjects are that newbies or people getting into this lifestyle should hear about? Maybe some topics that, that we should cover and that they're very important. I think we've touched on most of them, but in your opinion, what uh, do you think? One of the first ones is, you know, being very good at just knowing what's a bunch of fraud and crap and that's there, there is a lot of scams on there so many and have you been scammed yourself absolutely yeah, yeah. You, i think you have to get absolutely. scammed 
to understand the scam, right? right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, that, I think that's an easy one. Two would be, you know, I think you just have to talk about the financial. It's a tough thing to talk about. It. You know, you say you hate trying to talk, but oh, you yeah. have to. You have to talk about it. It's so awkward. Uh, it's awkward, but just do it and get it over it. You know, make sure you do I, I learned from you guys. Do it off the site. Don't do it on the site because mm -hmm. you don't want to get kicked off. Uh, have they ever flagged not, your account? No, not, no, they never have. But after I listened to you guys, I never talked mm -hmm. that honest. I say, hey, if you want to talk about stuff, let's do it We're off the site. We're helping people. Yeah. And then talk about what you expect from it because there's things like platonic the word platonic there's things like do they really mean platonic or is they just saying platonic if there's if, well then what are you getting out of it if you're giving all this and there's not yeah i'm not saying it should be sex right away i never expect that but you know maybe after f four or five dates you know hey i have gone six seven dates and didn't i said okay well this obviously i'm this is not 50 50 this is more 95 yeah right, so. yeah this is more a give give yeah. give so i think you know just being honest what you want and what you're looking for things that you expect would do you know this a lot of things some people can travel some people don't want to spend a night you got to figure out where you're willing to compromise you know i to me the traveling thing is kind of important i, I like to travel I can, Same. Yeah, I would rather do that than to spend the night thing. I'm okay with that, not spending the night. Now, have you ever responded to any of the messages from all of the foreigners that message you for, uh, from Venezuela? No, because what are you going to what are you, what are you, what are you gonna do? I mean, you're going to yeah. fly in from Venezuela to, you know, right. it's, I get so many people like that. The most recent thing I did, I accidentally must have upgraded my account to a premium or something, and they started charging me 99 versus now it's 250 or something. I well, didn't do it on oh, purpose. Oh, you, you upgraded to Diamond. Yeah. Diamond, yeah. I didn't mean to do it. I don't know how it happened. Oh. You, be, oh. <laughs> but I'm going to go back because yeah. I'm not even using it, so why should I pay that yeah. kind of money? What I noticed, though, there is a difference. You do get more inquiries, but for me, I don't know, I hate this. I'm so picky. I'm so based on what I do for a living. I'm mm -hmm. so picky. You get a lot of girls that you're not going to be really interested in, but you do get a ton more girls message you, for sure. Definitely do. Well, there's certain people that will only search Diamond members. Yeah. That's the only Yeah, I remember you guys had profiles. a whole episode, and you had a yeah. guy that was a Diamond talked to and, about And it. like you, he yeah. accidentally signed. I yeah. come to find out, he thought he was signing up for a three-month yeah, membership. Yeah, it was $250 <laughs> it was, three months. Too. Well, actually, it's now, I think it's 275 now. Yeah. Oh, but gosh. it only was for one month. Yeah. But... I know that there's women that only search for diamond Maybe, members because yeah. they are looking for the cream of the crop. Right. And it's, supposedly. But th th then it's also said women premium. What does that mean? If it says that just means they've paid so they can have extra features. Oh, okay. oh yeah, I do that. Filters yeah. oh. and things like that where they don't have those. Okay. You're premium, right? Yeah, I am Kimmy. premium. I pay for it. Yeah. yeah. What is it like? How much is it? 20 bucks a month? No, I think 30. I think it's like 45 yeah. or what 50. Is it, I mean, what I is it? I think it's like around 40. I yeah. also signed up to get my background check. I signed up for all of like the check stuff. All the and little so blue I, check I mark. I paid like 300 plus to that site. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm paying. <laughs> <laughs> Back to that. When somebody messages you and then you read in their profile that they're looking for an online relationship or a platonic relationship, just ignore those. I ignore it. I pretty much ignore it. Or I'll message them. Do you mean just really truly online and not meeting? If some, sometimes I message it back or not. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, I honestly just ignore. I'm not interested in online or, or if it's truly platonic. I, sometimes I don't necessarily know because I've been with one or two that said platonic and definitely was not platonic. Yeah. So it's hard. You got to figure out if it really is or not. Yeah. I think a lot of women have misinformation out there. I think they think that okay, these guys are just all so generous. They're just going to give them money for nothing. And, uh, you know, I think there's some people that are that naive and they think that sometimes, honestly. Yeah. So my newbie from my date last night just messaged me and said, I see a lot of talk about adventure seeking on women's profiles. Is that code for something? Adventure seeking? Adventure seeking. Here's what that means. It means they just want to see something new. You know, some people are not used to like, a ton of nice dinners or nice things or big grand houses or exotic cars or trips n yeah beautiful trips that's what it means it's like the adventure side like okay, that's what i thought too i said i don't think so girls just want to have fun and sugar <laughs> you are pushing this sugar thing that on him that was my answer <laughs> you are too funny well, he needs to learn i mean he will learn trust me you'll learn get him educated there lily i'm gonna teach him so doc you're 62 you said 62 and what is the age range that you search Give me, what's too young for you? 
I'm the youngest I've done is 20. 20. I know. <laughs> how do you feel like, I know how I feel when I go out with somebody that young. You know, some 20, 21 years are very mature. It just depends. I've been with some 35 year olds that were less mature than, a, I think it just depends same, on the person. Same, yeah. Honestly. But as a general rule, between 30 and 40. Yeah, that's kind thing. of your sweet spot where yeah. you prefer. Yeah. Yeah. Kimmy, what's the oldest guys you've gone out with? I don't know. You don't know? Probably like early 50s. Early yeah. 50s? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've... Mm, yeah. Well, Kimmy's 21 for yeah, reference well. purposes. But my sweet spot... Yeah. I mean, right now I'm loving late 30s, early 40s. But if a guy came to you looking really fit and sharp for his age oh yeah rick you wouldn't rick springfield yeah, yeah. <laughs> did i mention that <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, did you, did you catch him when they came through i seen him a few years ago he looks amazing unbelievable yeah, yeah we just caught yeah. him a few yeah. weeks ago mm -hmm. i'm really about i want to be really attracted to whoever i'm seeing and so i don't really care about age i also don't like men who are too out there with like how wealthy they are what does that mean talk about themselves they, like they're yeah. arrogant about it yeah they're and pretentious they're, sure i've met a lot of really humble really rich men and i i want everyone to realize women and men on both sides that women men have options and so do you if you're a beautiful woman on the site you have options of rich men you don't have to date an arrogant rich man because he has money you can date a nice rich man and that was like a mistake i was making once i like started to see so many different people i realized there's a ton of the guys i just didn't like at all and a few that i do so narrowing it down and then for rich men you know there's a lot of beautiful women you don't have to stick around with a beautiful woman who's just like bitchy <laughs> and you know or other things that are and make you uncomfortable. Yeah. well that's not <laughs> yeah so i don't mean unattractive physically i mean like their personality is yeah, not attractive. Yeah, there's a lot of beautiful, sophisticated, classy woman, if that's what you're into. If you want to get a ratchet, beautiful woman, okay, I'm into that too, <laughs> whatever you some want. Some guys are into that. Yeah, some guys want the, you know, long, they call them stripper nails, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You know, some guys are into that, whatever you're into, so don't settle. Sage advice from Kimmy. Yeah. Don't settle. So, Doc, I have to ask, what do you think your monthly dating budget is? Uh, there's been times it's been fifteen, twenty thousand. Yeah, month. it adds up quick, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, I've gotten into five figures, and yeah. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> These women are going to be the death of me. Uh, I feel that way sometimes. <laughs> but uh, my philosophy is I can't die with it, right? So yeah, the same. You can't you take know. it with you. Yeah, fortunately for me, I don't really have. Well, I say fortunately just a just a fact that i didn't have any children with my ex-wife of 16 years so i'm like well i guess i get to spend that inheritance yeah. now <laughs> yeah maybe true I, I mean kids are expensive yeah and now you have a bunch of little kids oh yeah the little sugar babies mm -hmm. it's gone down now and i'm just with the one so I yeah it's still probably close to 10 though yeah <laughs> <laughs> So, like, what's the longest trip you've ever taken with somebody? Like, have you ever done a week? Oh, yeah. The South America trip was 10 days. Uh, 10 days. That's yeah, nice. I've uh, uh, been to Cancun seven or eight days. What do you think of Cancun? Uh, it's far. It's, it's, pre it's pretty. It's nice. It's okay. Did you go to Tulum? Tulum, yes. Tulum's yeah, Kimmy pretty, just got yeah, back yeah, from there pretty. this summer. She's, she expensive. had a great time. Expensive. Oh, yeah. I stayed on yeah. the water one night. It was, like, 700-something dollars. Yeah, we stayed in... Uh, Pablo Escobar is one of his old houses there. Are you serious? $1,200 a night. I actually met Pablo Escobar's brother when we were down in uh, Colombia. I got a picture with me uh, with him. It was what? Cool. Yeah. Now, did you feel safe in Colombia? Um, yeah, I did. The girl I was with, that one, the devil one, she's Hispanic, Latin, and she had been there and she knew where to go and stuff. So I felt fairly safe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's good to go with somebody. It's good to go, particularly somebody who speaks Spanish. Take yeah. the devil if you're going to Colombia. Take the devil. She's a good <laughs> tour guide. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Doc, we really appreciate you coming all the way from San Diego to visit us in yeah, Scott. I know you had other business yeah, here, but yeah, I had uh, graduation to go. To. I'm glad you stopped in, and we got to talk to you live and in yeah. person. That's and nice having. 
having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, obsessed with your show. And you know, I'm about to ask you if I should get a BBL or not. <laughs> I think we're gonna have a consultation <laughs> yeah. after the show with the girls. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> they have all kinds of plastic surgery questions. You can listen to the next episode while you do my lipo. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, lots same of time. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Lipo twins. Well, anyway, lots of fun stories from Dr. Charles out of San Diego. And if you have some crazy sugar dating stories or questions, we'd love to hear them. You can go to our website at secretsofasugardaddy.com and be sure to follow us on Instagram at the same name, Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. All right. Thanks, gals. And, and follow me, too. Oh, follow yeah, yeah. Me too. Hey, let's give a quick plug. She, she changed her damn Instagram name on us. And so all the previous podcasts have the wrong Instagram name. So what is, is the new one? Kiki Day. K-I-K-I-D-A-E-E. All right. Throw that plug in for Kimmy. And Lily is like, eh, I'll steer clear of the social media. Yeah, I'm not big on the social media, but it is really fun following Kimmy Day. <laughs> no, it's Kiki Day. Kiki Day. Kiki Day. She changed it on us. So anyway, go follow Kiki Day. Until next episode. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to connect or even be on the show, we'd love to hear from you at secretsofasugardaddy.com.